Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. Welcome to the Bald Brad Show. In this episode, President Joe Biden contradicts himself regarding calling MAGA Republicans semi-fascist, a threat to the country, a threat to democracy, and extremists. Folks, this is one you are not going to want to miss. As always, hit that like and subscribe button. Our first clip of the day shows President Joe Biden contradicting himself, saying, I don't think any Trump supporter is a threat to this country, and then gives a litany of responses in terms of what he thinks is a threat to democracy. And if you listen closely, it's basically what the Democrats have been doing since the 80s outside of the January 6th debacle. It's a sight to behold. Let's go ahead and roll this one. All right. Hey, Mr. President, Mr. President, do you consider, Mr. President, do you consider all Trump supporters to be a threat to the country? No, everyone. Oh. Come on, look, guys. Just, you keep trying to make that case. I don't consider any Trump Anyone who calls for the use of violence fails to contend violence when it's used. Refuse to acknowledge that an election has been won. Insists upon changing the way in which the rules you count votes. That is a threat to democracy. Democracy. And everything we stand for, everything we stand for rests on the platform of democracy. When people voted for Donald Trump, now, they weren't voting for attacking the Capitol. They weren't voting for overruling the election. They were voting for a boss being put forward. So I am not talking about anything other than it is inappropriate and it's not only happening here, but other parts of the world where there's a failure to recognize and condemn violence whenever it's used for political purposes, failure to condemn the to manipulate electoral outcomes, failure to acknowledge when elections were won or lost. Oh, Folks, does that not sound like the Democrat Party and the things they've been doing since the 80s? I mean, they literally allowed dead people to vote. They allowed people that were supposedly on the register for their states to vote, but they weren't there. They've been going against the integrity of the elections, like I said, since the 80s. I mean, literally... There are actual governors for states that still think like Stacey Abrams of Georgia still thinks that she won the election when she lost by like 50,000 votes. So he's going to push this whole thing and it clearly just runs parallel with his own party, which is crazy, <laughs> which is crazy. I mean, and the craziest thing of all is that he literally contradicts himself in that statement to what he said prior. Let's go ahead and roll this contradiction. I don't consider Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. I mean, folks, you can't make this up. What does he think MAGA Republicans are? Make America great again, Republicans. We voted for Donald Trump. I mean, I voted for the guy. I want to make America great again. I would be under that umbrella of a MAGA Republican. I'm not beholden to Trump. But I voted for the guy and I'd vote for him again. I don't think that he wanted people to storm the Capitol. He said clearly in his words not to do that, to pe uh, peacefully protest. OK, I mean, the guy. Yeah. Could he have been more clear? Sure. But you can be as clear as you want with the Democrat Party. You could be as clear as you want with Joe Biden, Karine Jean-Pierre. They're still not going to understand. Look at Peter Ducey on how clear he proposes his questions to Karine Jean-Pierre. She has yet to answer one. OK, or you have Phil Wegman of Real Clear Politics giving very clear questions to her. She can't answer it either. And the guy's trying to find what the hell she's talking about. I mean, everybody's like that. So it doesn't matter how clear we are with them. They're still not going to get it. But what's amazing is because Joe Biden's out there going after Republicans, calling them extremists, calling them a threat to democracy, a threat to the country. But man, remember, according to what he said, he doesn't find him a threat all of a sudden. Well, the media are championing his statements that he made in front of Pennsylvania. Uh, in Philadelphia. 
President Biden delivered one of the most forceful speeches of his presidency. This speech, it really felt like a reset, like a reset that the president, the administration really felt like they needed. A, a, a vintage Biden speech and something he he wanted to give. These MAGA Republicans who, as he put it, represent an extremism that threatens the foundation of our republic. Because I really thought this was a fascinating bit of presidential stagecraft. So I think he avoided being overly polarizing. It, it was a very, very patriotic speech. What Biden is basically saying is there are two big movements in this country. One is mine. I want to defend this democracy. The other is a movement that is not in favor of those things necessarily. I don't, I don't know who the it's not all Republicans, just MAGA Republicans are for. Like, I'm sure that there are some white supremacists who will vote with white supremacists who don't think they're white supremacists. We're happy that Biden didn't call them a white supremacist. I just want to pause it. This guy on the screen right here, while he was on The View, he's a uh, correspondent for the nation. He literally said the Constitution is trash. Just to give you a perspective of who's part of the Democrat Party and the progressive left here, they're still shuffling this guy out that wants to tear up the Constitution, thinks it's trash, needs to be rewritten, all this other stuff. So I just want to give context to who this guy is. But, like, it's not for me. Of course it's not for you. This country's not for you. The, the, the founding fathers, the stuff that they wrote, the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, none of it seems to be for you because you think it's all going against and oppressing black people, minorities, and all those other things. Well, we have a great snippet here from phil wegman of real clear politics folks i'm gonna link this guy's stuff in the description below i recommend you check out his articles fascinating writer does a great job of showing the contradiction really quick here between joe biden and his statements so here quote donald trump and the MAGA republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic biden proclaimed and while the president attempted to clarify that not all of his political opponents were extremists, he insisted that extremism was part and heart of the modern GOP. Quote, there's no question the Republican Party today is dominated, driven, and intimidated by Trump and the MAGA Republicans, he continued. And that's a threat to this country. Completely contradicts what he just said that we saw in the first segment here of Peter Ducey asking him if he thought that Republicans, MAGA Republicans, were a threat to democracy and the country and all of a sudden it's like no i don't think that anymore i don't think that then what was that whole speech about that terrible speech that the media and and, and the progressive left outlets want to sit there and rub your shoulders and your feet with this is crazy i mean he called mag republicans extremists and semi-fascists and then what i love is as you saw and that we're kind of circling back a little jen Psaki phrase is the whole idea of talking about elections and that you're not accepting the elections and manipulating it and doing all these things. The, the Democrat party has been doing that since like the eighties, the early eighties. So this whole thing here is just, it's crazy. It's hypocritical. It's gaslighting. It's spinning it and it's manipulative at the same time. And it makes you wonder you guys, if he actually doesn't realize anymore that he said those statements, it's plausible. As we said, many of times, this guy puts himself in the best position to be crooked based on his cognitive decline, because he could say, I don't remember saying that. That never happened. I have, I have no recollection of ever doing that. This guy has set himself up so perfectly to do some shady business in the White House. It is remarkable. Well, folks, that is our Sunday episode. I hope you enjoy it. Check out Phil Wegman's, the whole article down in the link, the description for Real Cold Politics. It is worth the read, folks. As always, hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you tomorrow here on The Bob Brat Show.